Okay, we have nine o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Was the meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. Uh, clerk will have roll. All members present. Okay, we have the agenda before us. Do I have a motion to approve? Supervisor Paler, second by Supervisor Scott Pease. Any discussion or questions on the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. The agenda is approved. Uh, we have the minutes from April 10th. Motion to approve by Supervisor Kabarski, second by Supervisor Rick Pease. Any discussion or questions on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Minutes are approved from April 10th. We'll allow public participation as we move through. Uh, correspondence? None. Okay, no correspondence. I'll well, start with the Treasury's report then. Good morning. Um, does anybody have any questions? Everything's been pretty status quo. Supervisor Gabarski? <laughs> Jenny, are these um, interest rates reviewed monthly or how often? The interest rates depends on the on the entity. Now, one community bank, we have our agreement that they so many points over the LGIP process that comes through. So every time the LGIP changes, then that one gets up. So um, Prevail is, has been solid now for like three months in a row. I don't think that's gonna change much, but the other ones now are catching up to them, so. Any other questions? It gets off really easy this month, so. Okay. And we'll move on to the IT report. Good morning, everybody. Is there any questions on this month's report? No, Supervisor Rick Pease. Um, I don't because I don't watch much online, but some people have talked to me when they watch online, they don't see the county supervisors actually who talks and who doesn't because it's so small. I guess is it a small line on the bottom, I guess. It's a split view with the cameras, so it only shoots the the room. Okay. When we initially... Is there any way to make those a little bit bigger and maybe the agenda smaller or not? I guess that they just would like to see who's talking more because you just see. Yeah. Just, just that, that's what I've heard. That, yep. like, like I said, I don't even really go there. So. Yep. So that would be a, a setting for an individual within their own Zoom. Okay. They would have to expand that, and I don't know off the top of my head how how much you can really expand that. If you could, as you can see up top, there is that's fine. A, a split as window as, as long as they could do it on their end. Yep. Just tell them that. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And hopefully, in the committees, like now, I mean, they're announcing who it is when they speak. You know, or and maybe in the committee levels, it's not as much as what the county board is. So. Any other questions for IT director? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, human resources report. I assume the county manager is going to answer questions if there's any. John? Yes, yeah, Supervisor Gabarski. I just want to compliment this. Um, display on here. I think it's easier to follow. It's more informative. I appreciate it. And I think they did a nice job, whoever did it. Okay. Any other questions? I need to ask a question on the, mm -hmm. the number number of employees. I think might be missing a couple on calls like for a county clerk or even Pam herself now that is employees by department. I don't see them on there. Are they supposed to be on there? Mr. Chair? Yes. So I believe the on-call for HR is like in its own little section there at the bottom. Where I guess Pam mentions that she's the on-call. Yeah, I, I 
But you're saying in, in the department's? Like, the medical examiner has on call, yeah. Okay. Here, I was a period. Yeah, so this is a first time with this report and it's, um, you know, it's dynamic, so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. There's John, no... Quick question, yes. I see Marilyn's in, right, somewhere? Yes, yes. There she is. <laughs> so just um, on, on call, Marilyn, I don't know if you have a mic there, please. Okay. On call, is that, you know, so much on a 24 hour basis? Is your mic on, mine, too, Bruce? Is it flight time, but that doesn't. Oh, it has a, you gotta get kind of closer to it. Hello. There you go. <laughs> what did you put? Uh, the on call, they they may take a 12 hour shift, 24, 48, 72. Um, just what we sign up for each month. Okay, I was just curious. Okay. Seeing no further questions, move on to the Corporation Council's report. Good morning, any questions on my report? Do you have a question? Yeah, Scott, the Rinky versus Adams County. Could you fill us in what that's all about again? That is a uh, Leola Assessors Plat number one, lot 10. We own it. Um, from the county's point of view, that is an easement area that allows uh, nine other people to use their cabins. Basically, it is. Uh, Reinke is one of the owners of the lot. He's claiming that that is a public road that the county is entitled to maintain. Um, the, the county has never maintained it, um, and we're in the process of, of uh, uh, preparing for trial on that. I just filed my motions to dismiss, uh, several of them. I received his motion why he thinks they should receive summary judgment in their favor. I will be responding to that by the end of the month. And then I think it's like June 15th, both parties get to reply to those responses, and then sometime after June 5th, the judge will determine whether this matter can be resolved without a trial in one side's favor or the other. Thank you. Doing a good job. That's, that's the one we've been working on for like two years or more, right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's why I needed to be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> See, where's your paler? Yes. Just we tried deeded, deeding that property over to all them people once. Is that being held up by this lawsuit? It, it it is, and it's it's specifically as Reinke doesn't want to be involved in that. No. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on then to the county clerk's report. Any questions? Can't get it home. Super just got peas. I think it was in your report that uh, um, the fairgrounds blacktop didn't came well over what we thought it was going to be. Is that correct? No. That is not my report. Okay. Oh, that's in uh, Cynthia's. I guess I'll ask that later then. <laughs> oh, now I know what's in there. <laughs> Okay, nothing else. Move on then to the county manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning. So I'm gonna start out with the appreciations. Dustin Grant and his team were responsible for achieving a class seven community rating system, which benefits uh, those residents who need flood insurance and they will receive a 15% discount because of it. So congratulations to Dustin Grant and his team and thank you for a job well done. Page two, special thanks to Janet Leah and her team for another successful event in, uh, as it relates to reality days. So congr congratulations to Janet Leah and her team and thank you for a job well done. Under capital projects, 
The roof project is still on the horizon. Fairgrounds, as was mentioned just a moment ago, is going to, uh, the pavement replacement is expected to come in over budget, roughly 40,000, and the funds are available in the maintenance capital projects reserve. County Highway M update, we have County M to County G to the east. It's still on schedule for mid-August start. County Highway M uh, to County G to the west, the tie-ins will be later in May. Under happenings, Corporation Counsel's Office will be moving over to the courts. I kind of uh, discussed that in a little bit more detail in my bulleted events during the month, if you uh, want more information on that. The second bullet point, Janet Leah testified before the Joint Finance Committee on behalf of the Fund Funding Increase Wisconsin's uh, Child Support Program, and I kind of go into detail about that. On page three, on April 8th, there was a new event this year at the air, airport that was very successful, so much so that the EAA, which is the Experimental Aircraft Association, will be planning to do this on an annual basis. And you can see how well attended that event was. And then also the Charitable uh, Association and, and what they're all about there, I kind of mentioned. Down below all the pictures, uh, library also had a Easter event, Easter egg hunt on, on the community center lawn. lawn. Next, we have the sales students went to the Capitol. I mentioned that here. Next, the Adams County Kids Day took place this month on April 29th, 2023. Page four, underneath all the pictures there. Again, I wanna remind everyone, we have a splash pad presentation. This is the county kind of assisting or doing a cooperative with the city of Adams. Uh, we're hoping to help with the funding of it. And uh, that presentation is just a preliminary one to get an interest, right? If there's enough interest, then we take on some additional steps. But I will discuss those steps in detail at the city meeting. And that's scheduled for May 15th at 6 p.m. We go on to page five, about the middle of the page. I have a meeting with uh, Kyle Patterson to discuss the medical examiner pay. The reason I, I touch on this is that it is on the agenda today and about increasing pays and, and assisting with the, the chief deputy positions there. Were there any questions on my report? Yeah, Super Scott, please. When you used the, when we're going back to the asphalt in the fairgrounds, was that bidded out that it came in 40,000 over budget or is that just a company coming back and saying it's costing 40,000 more? And did the original money come out of ARPA funds? Mr. Chair? Yes. So I'm looking at Kyle because I believe it is not coming from ARPA funds. It's actually coming from the maintenance budget, but I'm gonna have Kyle touch on the bid process. Seems like there were two separate pieces here. Yep. Um, so the project was bid out, um, well, I believe the maintenance director got a quote from one company. I'd instruct him to get another quote from another company, um, just so that way we do have multiple quotes there for the blacktop. Um, the engineering, though, that was through AIRS. So what came in over the fix? Yeah. Yeah, it was the it was the quote for the pavement that came in over. Then, then we anticipated not it's going to be over budget, right? It, it's going to be over what we had anticipated in the capital budget for how okay. much it was going to cost. But because of the way that we do the capital budgets, we'll, we do have reserve funds available to. Okay. So the work isn't coming over what's quoted. It's just over what we budgeted. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes. So that was the lower of the two bids, I take it. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, the maintenance director is working on getting another bid right now. Or no. Okay. So. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Super Eskabarski. Yeah, this, on that same topic, this might be more for the chairman of the committee, um, Jerry. Um, is that drainage issue taken care of before this repavement? Do you know anything about that or how it's being handled? To the best of my knowledge, the drainage issue will be part of the repaving. It'll be graded when it's repaved. 
uh, at this point, nothing's been done. Okay, certainly address that issue because it, it right has been some problems in the past. Exactly, that was the that was the idea why the repaving started is because the drainage was such a problem that we asked for a correction on that, and it was decided that they would repave everything at the same time. Okay, Supervisor Rick, please. Going back to the pavement. <clears throat> Um, we're trying to secure another bid, but if you already had a bid process and the bid is out there, is it unfair for somebody to go back out and get another bid to see if we can get it lower? I've just, if I was, if I didn't bid on it, if I bid on it and I was a sole bidder, I guess I'd be disappointed if somebody went out or if we went out and maybe re-advertised and said, we're still looking for bids or again, bids because it came in over then I could see it, but I don't see just going out looking for one more bid and they already know what the price is. I know if it was a bid process or. Yep, Mr. Chair, I'm looking through my yeah. documents to see what that process was, if they were sealed bids or not. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes. Well, he's uh, looking for that. This has just happened. I think we got to relook at how are we going about this bidding process. It just happened where we uh, had bids that are we told the bidders exactly how high we were going to go on a certain hmm. uh, bid. And that's backwards. You get the bid, tell them what we need, you get the bids, and then we decide what we're going to spend, not the other way around. And here we are in another case with the bidding process that nobody seems to know. Mr. Chair? Yes. So the one the one thing I can comment on that is that when we set these budgets, especially with capital projects plans, I mean, it's in there, like what we have set aside for certain projects. Um, so that would be kind of challenging not to disclose that. I guess they would have that available to them. Is, isn't that right, Kyle? Okay. He's shaking his head yes, for those who can't see him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing with being so transparent and having so much stuff in your budget mm -hmm. for capital projects. Yeah. I guess I should have talked louder or longer on Kyle. He's still looking. <laughs> the thing is, if we go on to the next one, he's going to be talking about something else. So. John. Yes, Supervisor Barsky. Just a comment on this bid process. I mean, it's so much different than it used to be. You had numerous people out there looking for jobs and and so forth. And now we're lucky to get one or two bids on a lot of this stuff. And it's it makes it extremely difficult to get competitive bidding going on out there. So I, there's going to be some exceptions no matter what we do, I'm afraid. Yep. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yes. Yep. I'm sorry. I was getting my wires crossed here on, on all the projects. Um, one there is uh, one for crack filling out at uh, community center, and then um, there's another one for the engineering proposal by Ayers, and I believe that was the one that Bill was saying the estimates from Ayers was over what we had budgeted. Um, so that one, I believe, there is going to be bidding process on but then the crack filling um because of the dollar amount that we got on the bid we needed to get a second quote those were not sealed quotes those were just proposals okay yeah my apologies okay yes so, so and it was mentioned that nothing's happened out there so far but actually ears has taken a look at and measured everything and there's been a line that's been buried so we don't have to dig up the new blacktop so there actually has been some action out there, correct? Um, I guess I can answer that yeah. question. Yes, it, the electric line has been buried. Um, as far as I know, the next step would be the grading and paving. Okay. Any other questions on the county manager's report? 
If not, we'll move on to the project status report. Mr. Chair? Yes. Are there any questions on the project status report? Lana, are you able to zoom out on that? Does that help? Any big highlights you'd want to point out that you know? Um, well, the yeah, we did just finish up with the audit last month for April. Um, other than that, there wasn't really too much, too many big projects going on. I, we do have the centralized accounting that I'm probably going to add on to this project status report after this month. Um, but other than that, there's really not too many big projects. Okay. Shivers Gorbarski. Yeah, looking at the airport deal here, land acquisition and so forth. How are we doing as far as the timing of that and um, getting it somewhat uh, settled? Does anybody know the answer to that? Mr. Chair, yes. I'll begin with uh, Kyle and I met with with the airport manager last month, and I believe he did give us an update on that. Kyle, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, uh, if I recall, I believe the state was still working on finalizing everything. Um, Think there were still some buildings and structures on it uh, that they were working on removing. Um, is that is that what happened, Cynthia? I'm sorry. <laughs> has has the land been acquired? Is that is is that part done? I know when I was on the committee, it was identified, and they were just working. I know some of the trailers had to be moved and stuff like that. So. But you're dealing with the federal government. It takes a while. I've seen some transfers, but whether they're all done or not, I don't know. So <laughs> we can probably ask uh, Supervisor Gilner's on that committee. Any other questions on projects? Okay, seeing that we'll move on to the ARPA work group report. Yep, so I believe I just updated this last week. So it should be fairly current. Um, so you can see down at the bottom, we have about $100,000 remaining. Uh, if all of these projects go through and they go through to what we had budgeted, there are some that may end up being under budget. Um, for example, youth engagement and truancy, that one may end up being under budget. But um, are there any? Hmm? But the anticipated um, funds are updated on here, right? With the resolutions that we have on today? Yeah. Okay. Yep, those are on there. Okay, seeing no questions, we'll move on to quarterly financial report. All right, so I'll run through this here. Um, so this first tab is gonna be the revenues and you're gonna see um, what the account description is up at the top. Um, the budgeted amount is the next column fiscal year to date activity, how much we're under or over budget, 
and the uh, percent budgeted. So on the revenues, because we're a quarter of the way through the year, if the revenues are under 25%, I did put a comment on there. Um, if it was a minimal dollar amount or minimal percentage amount, I just didn't leave a comment on those. Um, but you can see if you scroll all the way to the bottom, Lana, sorry. Um, right now we're sitting at 62% for revenues, but that's mainly because tax levy, um, that all was posted right away at the start of the year. So right now it, it is favorable for revenues. Um, any questions on the revenues? I don't know if you all had a chance to review it before the meeting. Um, then the second tab, that one's expenses. It's kind of organized the same way with all the headers on there. Um, so I did put a comment on the expenses. Uh, if the fiscal year to date percentage was over 25%. Um, there are, there were a few, um, let me see here. There was just a one that I kind of had a notice on um, with the indigent counseling and the clerk of courts. Um, that one's just kind of trending higher. We, we've gone off the last five years uh, average for when we made that budget. Um, that was about the only one. Were there any questions on the expenses? Yeah, yeah Supervisor Rick Peace. We heard, our, we heard a, in our committee in Health and Human Services that we've spent quite a large share of money on our inpatient treatments, but I don't see that on here. Is that something that would be highlighted here or no? Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, um, this is just the general fund revenues and expenditures. Um, so Health and Human Services, they, they have their own at their committee. Okay. And we're not going to cover a solid waste one or. Oh, yep. She bumped over. Um, yeah. So the last tab, solid waste, then. Um, so you can see the revenue and expenditures as we ran it. But then um, underneath it, I did add on there the debt service transfer because that is cash moving out of the solid waste fund, but you're not going to see it hit the expenses because it's just an asset transfer, essentially. Um, then we have the dep depreciation expense, which is recorded at year end. And that's an estimate. Um, the insurance allocation, which that I uh, will be working on in June for allocating out the, their prorated share of insurance costs. Um, then you have the long-term care and closure costs estimated, um, and then the pension expense, um, that's also an estimate. So <clears throat> you can see with all of these other, with all this other activity that happens within the solid waste fund right now, they're not sitting very well for 2023. A lot of those transactions, they're gonna, they're going to occur later on in the year. Uh, Super Scott piece. Those five in the loss column there, that doesn't end up to the net profit loss. What am I missing? Would be the revenue plus the exp less the expenses oh, okay. and, and those other five, right? Is that correct? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to illustrate um, that Although a lot of times solid waste may look good when you just run revenues and expenses, these items um, that don't always hit the expenses, they just hit the um, balance sheet items, so assets, liabilities, and equity. 
Um, I'm just trying to illustrate that those also have an impact on the financial standing of the solid waste department. Okay. If there's no other questions, we'll move on to resolutions. So 14A, resolution to amend 2023 Adams County budget for the County Veteran Service Office. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yep. Um, so this one, this is just a budget amendment because we received um, funds that we did not anticipate during the budget process for 2023, and it's uh, $15,878 in grant funds from the state. So we're increasing the revenue and increasing the expenses for Veteran Service Office. So is this increase for materials or hours or? Um, there is a MOU that the state provided us. Um, and it's essentially it's gotta be to promote the county veteran service office and get more awareness so that way we can serve more people. Okay. Supervisor Rick Pease, motion to approve it. Yep. Send it on to county board. Second by Scott Pease. Discussion or questions on the Resolution. Okay, seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Okay, motion is approved that resolution will be sent on to county board. So, resolution to amend the 2023 Adams County budget finance, human resources, and land count water conservation. Kyle, you're going to cover this? Mr. Chair. You know, um, so this is going to be moving um, some dollars around from human resources and from land and water. Um, it's going to move dollars over to the county manager slash administrative coordinator department budget to uh, be able to have two added positions. Um, and that's going to be a later resolution. And what we're what we're hoping to accomplish here is uh, starting to tr transition to uh, centralized accounting. There's been some vacancies um, within the county in financial related roles, and we're gonna try to centralize everything. Um, so that way we don't have individual departments with their own financial people when we have countywide financial individuals. Okay. Supervisor Gabarski, motion to uh, approve and send on down to county board. Second by Supervisor Paler. So, discussion or questions? Supervisor Scott Pease, then Supervisor Rick Pease looks like you. So, go ahead, Scott. So, this essentially, the two people we lost in uh, human resources is going to, we're going to just hire two people and make them central centrally located mr chair yes um this this does not move all of the budget dollars associated with those positions and human resources it's um just a part of one of the positions you want to talk about the whole thing so we get the whole picture i guess you might as well <laughs> yeah so <laughs> it might be easier that way exactly what my question was because i was trying to figure it out in my head myself yep so i got a, i got a spreadsheet that i that i put together uh to, to that's where the estimates came from um so i had estimated uh seven months i believe for human resources um for the human resources coordinator position um and moved about roughly seven months worth of wages and benefits from that over to the county manager. Um, so I was not moving the HR director wages and benefits at all. I was just moving the HR coordinator wages and benefits. And then with land and water, um, there's a staff vacancy down there and they're currently evaluating what they're going to be doing with that position. And what I did for my estimates, um, 
I just plugged whatever else I needed to fund the two fiscal accounting clerks. So human resources is a transfer of basically this seven months of wages and benefits and then land and water is just a plug to fill the rest. But that's not the only finance areas that's being, is that the only other finance area? I thought maybe there's nothing in the sheriff's office or? Mr. Chair, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so the sheriff's office is currently evaluating what they're gonna be doing with that uh, fiscal manager position. They haven't made a decision yet. So okay. we didn't want to uh, include that, yeah. Okay. that in here, yeah. Yes, Supervisor Rick Pease. I keep hearing centralized county financial management, correct? Mm -hmm. So is the goal eventually to move? I know South Waste has one, Highway has somebody that, the, if I'm wrong, let me know here. But are we all moving towards that, that they would all come in-house here? Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, the enterprise funds are a little bit different. Um, so solid waste and highway, they they may end up staying, I guess, uh, we're, we're looking at opportunities when they present themselves. Um, so with the vacancy at the sheriff's department, that was an opportunity to be like, okay, we'll, we'll take on some of that stuff. We've been working with the sheriff's department um, and I've been helping out with some of the grants and other miscellaneous stuff that that position did as well as um, other staff in my department are also helping out as well. Um, so we're kind of looking at them as they present themselves. HHS, that's a possibility that they may move over to centralized accounting and not be like, um, their own kind of division within HHS. We're just kind of evaluating everything as it comes up. And right now this kind of seemed like the right transition to make given the vacancies. Mr. Chair? Yes. What I'll add with centralized accounting, it's it's not simply just accounts receivable. That means receiving cash in, invo invoicing going out. It's, um, it's the accounts payable, which is paying for vouchers. That's going to be centralized. Then the one additional thing that we're doing is we're going to centralize grants. So we're going to have a grant specialist, somebody who's going to help multiple departments, but be a grant specialist. So quarterly reportings are met, um, expectations of grants, parameters of grants, all that stuff is met by a, by a specialist. But that specialist is also going to be charged with our capital assets, acquisition, and disposals. So it's, it's a pretty big, it should take some burden off departments that way. But again, we're trying to do this through attrition. We're not trying to implement change, you know, to kind of shock the system, but we're just trying to kind of evaluate things as it presents itself to us. To which got peace. Have you looked at where you're gonna house this? Mr. Chair? Yes. I think we could talk about this, right? So a uh, building project. We were talking about initially this, and this was covered in the building meeting, that we, we had these phases. And one phase was admin. And instead of creating or maybe uh, building a new building, we're going to kind of use what we've got this side of the house. So in that process, we're hoping to centralize all the service areas. When I say centralize, I'm talking about a customer can walk in on the main floor through some main doors and be right there in a service area and have all these windows right there on the same level with not very far from each other. So it's basically what you see now, but we're gonna kind of move offices around. And that is something that's gonna be decided as a group to include employees and department heads. Everybody that's involved is gonna have some say as to where what their feeling is about this layout. So in that process, centralized accounting most likely will go in the basement. So that's gonna be like Kyle and, and that area will go in the basement. I'm not sure where I go. I don't really care where I go, but we'll figure it out. What's what's convenient for board members to see me and, and such. But um, yeah, so all that needs to be worked out. So there's war there's room to answer your question. Simply it's there's room. Yeah, super Scott, please. 
I get that and all, but we're starting to look at not only acquiring some land or something, uh, but if you could let the building committee know as soon as you got some sort of idea, I mean, that would help immensely. Supervisor Kabarski. Getting back to uh, people in finance. Now you lost one in the sheriff's department, but transferred to a different department. So well, this might be a simple question, but they're both large departments. Why didn't just stay in one and bring the other one in instead? Just out of curiosity. Did I say that plain enough? No. <laughs> well, we the one from the one from the sheriff's department went out to Highway. Highway. And so now we got to figure out some replacement type of thing at the sheriff's department versus the highway department. So why did we do it that way? That's, I guess, the gist of the question. Could have consolidated it before and not had the highway department. Yeah. That's the, that's the question, right? Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, Cynthia and I did, um, and we had some brief discussions about it when that position became vacant at highway department um but they're they're they also operate two different funds they have an enterprise fund and they also have their special revenue fund um and i believe cynthia did you mention anything to pat when that came up at all yeah um mr chair yes so highway currently has two uh two two persons one is a fiscal manager and then we have a, what is that fiscal accounting clerk so those two were kind of targeted we were kind of looking at it uh, but I did have a discussion with Pat and he is um, adamant that those positions kind of need to stay there because they do much more than than maybe what those of us think that they do like we, we think oh well we can just do centralized accounting but I believe that they have a lot more functions involved that taking that position away would would create um, stress on that department. So that's why that stayed that way. And and those discuss the same discussions are happening with the the uh, sheriff's office right now. Apparently, these might be growing pains that you're going to have to deal with at some time. Certainly, if you've got different types of accounting and so forth, and now you're going to bring it into central accounting these bridges have to be crossed mm -hmm. somewhere sometime okay just a point to ponder yeah it's just it's not a question okay so we got the motion in a second all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Okay. That uh, mo motion passes and that resolution be moved on to county board. Uh, resolution to reclassify accounts payable specialist to lead fiscal specialist. Kyle. Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, so this is reclassifying the current accounts payable specialist in the finance department or to a lead fiscal specialist. Um, and this is also part of the centralized accounting. Um, the, the position is going to be handling uh, doing every other payroll. Um, and they've also taken on a lot more um, stuff within the department. Uh, pulling up the resolution really quick. We did go through the proper procedures and did complete all of the forms and sent them over to human resources and also to the county manager um, as per the personnel policy. Um, it's also going to, the position is also going to help out with overseeing a little bit of centralized accounting. Um, and it, it's, it's just going to help out with all of the other duties associated with the two staff that are going to be added. 
Mr. Chair? Yes. Something I'd like to add is that, so you, so Kyle mentioned that this position is going to take 50% of the payroll. What does that mean? It means there's going to be like odd even. So currently right now, Carol Wood is our payroll. Uh, Carol Wood has assumed some roles from, or it's from some tasks from HR, right? She's going to be doing workers comp and um, I am, I am, I said IMRF, but um, she's taken on some additional roles, which would, in the future might classify that position to be a HR manager in the future. So with that, 50% of the payroll now needed to go to someone else to kind of have this cross training. So if one person's not there, we do have someone fully trained and capable of doing payroll full time if, if that's the need. So so odd even like you, we have two payrolls a month. So odd even we'd have maybe Carol do one payroll and then um, Stephanie Brem or this position, whoever's in it, is going to be doing the other half of the payroll. Not half, but the whole payroll, one part of the month. And then she's got, um, he or she's got oversight too that's being added to the position. How was it positioned at grade 11, I guess? I guess how was that determined? I know before we'd normally send it off, but... Mr. Chair, yes. Um, there's already a. There are two lead fiscal specialists within the county that are on the wage schedule. Uh, okay. There's a lead fiscal specialist at HHS and at Solid Waste. Okay. Supervisor Kabarski, then Supervisor Rick Pease. Maybe I should let Rick go first. <laughs> okay, Supervisor Rick Pease and Supervisor Kabarski. So my question has to do with. I mean, we're upping the pay grade, I would assume. So where were we? I mean, it. I, I'm questioning why in mid-year these have to be increased. I, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Yeah, Rick's going to follow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let, me add, Rick, let me add my spin to it. You're, you're going down my track. With these increases to these pay where is the benefit for the county? Are we saving money somewhere else to uh, accomplish what you guys want to do here? That's that's the real question to me. Um, if we're moving these positions around, some people are taking HR. I'm assuming we're eliminating positions somewhere to pay for all this. So I'm assuming we are saving some money, but right now I don't see where we are. Mr. Chair? Yes. So one position that we're potentially saving is the HR director. And that is a large dollar amount. So there is a, a saving. So all this change that's happening, we're still coming out way ahead. Uh, I do have some future consideration. It's not on the agenda for land and water. So I do need to kind of be um, careful of our funds because there might be a need in that area for something to happen there. But I'm, I'm doing some analysis right now with land and water. So right now we have a savings and that's what we'll communicate to you. There is a savings. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, it's going from pay grade 13 to 11. Pay grade 13. Ooh, I mean, they're going from 13 to 11. Yeah. I guess for me, that's the lead is the savings part of this more than um, you're the county manager and you should lead your team in the direction you want it to, but there also has to be a benefit for us to do it. And that's what I was looking for. Where are we saving money so we can increase somebody's pay because they take on more responsibility? Mr. Chair? Yes. So it's twofold. One, there's a cost savings. Then the other is taking stress off a department and that's where the grants are gonna come in. The, the grant reporting, having a specialist in here doing that, it's going to lessen the load on a department and land and water is one of them. I mean, I mean, talking about the grants, I guess, uh, compliance with grants. And I know that's a bigger thing as we talk about audit and, you know, I mean, uh, in my conversations with the auditors this year, that was one thing that was asked of me is, you know, what did I think about the compliance? And I was hoping that it is 
but getting better and it's probably better if we have it more consolidated i guess you know i would i would hope because instead of just one person knowing about grants and in this department knowing a little bit if you have one resource it might be better off so but supervisor Kabarski, you had a comment i just wanted to make a quick comment on the cross trading i think that is highly desirable and i think it should be done as much as we can do it so you know someone has to go somewhere and we're not held hostage we don't want to do go down that type of path so i think it's the right direction treasure and this is not to negate the person that whatever because we're looking we've always been told to look at the job um what led you to do a reclass versus a new position with the change of description I know other people have asked that. That's when I said I would ask that. So, Mr. Chair? Yes. I believe the position as it stands now is considered accounts payable. That's too restrictive. So that's why we're doing the accounting clerk so that we can give more functions. It kind of opens it up for us. Um, I was going to say something else about the um, the grants. Oh, yes. Another benefit of the grants that you don't, and and the chair touched on it, is the auditors one of the findings that we have and this is through the grant agencies too is a someone not re, not doing the CIFA report which is a state help me Kyle state and federal aids yeah so this is all grants and the CIFA report is not done by our staff which is a finding we because we're supposed to be the experts and we're supposed to be doing the data we're relying on our auditors to do it so having this position in the future is going to get that finding taken care of. I don't think we had a motion to approve this yet. So, right, did we? No. Okay. We just had discussion, so. I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion by Supervisor Rick P. second by Supervisor Kabarski. Any discussion or questions? Yes. So one of these positions is going to be basically the grant person. Because you just said one person would be handling it. Mr. Chair? Yes. I believe the position is going to do more than just grants. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, but one person of one of these will be handled. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have one position that's grant and Other right, could be capital assets, acquisition, disposition. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying nay. Okay, that motion is approved and that will move on to county board. So uh, next resolution to add two fiscal accounting clerks. Finance director is gonna cover this again. You're the owner of all these things. I assume you're covering these, yep. but I don't know. Maybe you're... I, I think we've had a lot of discussion on. It. I guess I'll take questions. Um, if there's any? We've kind of covered quite a bit of this through the budget amendment resolution and all the other conversation. Okay. Super regular Barsky looks confused. Yes, I guess. I guess no. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, this. Yeah, this resolution is adding fiscal accounting clerks that are going to be in the finance department. Um, we already had the budget amendment that was done for these positions. Um, and like Cynthia was saying earlier, it's going to be a lot of grants, contracts, capital assets. Um, and then there's also some other stuff that departments are doing, like, for example, maintenance bill takes care of um, all of his invoices that come in. Um, we're going to help out with some of that stuff um, so that way individual departments aren't having to sit there and figure out what account numbers to charge when paying invoices. Um, so that, that's just a quick list of the items that we're going to be taking over with these positions. And those were duties that were being handled by some of those positions in the other departments, like in the land and water? Yes. Um, with with relation to grants, it's kind of all piecemealed right now. 
every department kind of handles their own. Uh, and, um, so like emergency management, she handles doing all the financial reporting for that. Um, same with the sheriff's department, that, that was all kind of handled in that individual department. We're trying to get it more centralized so that way we know where all the grants are, the dollars associated with those grants and the expenses associated with those grants. So that way we can have better uh, reporting and hopefully in the future eliminate the audit finding. And Mr. Chair, something that Kyle, sorry, I didn't ask you. Yeah, Mr. Chair. go ahead. Um, Kyle touched on it was contracts. That's another area. So the, as you know, the clerk's office keeps, tr they have a record of all the contracts, but we need someone that's watching due dates and, you know, working out, you know, when, when we need to start having these discussions about putting stuff out for a bit. I mean, we got to be ahead of it instead of waiting for a contract to mature and then realizing, whoa, this was two years past. I mean, it happened in solid waste. Right, that it was years that a contract had expired. No fault to a department. Okay, it's, there's a lot going on, and it's a lot to be putting on department heads to keep track of that. So again, we're just trying to to centralize everything, and it's going to make it more efficient across the board. Should we raise Rick, please? Actually, I'm going to be really in favor of this. I've worked in a, a county government accounting office before. We used to always have to worry about um, discounts that vendors give us that um, if you pay within 20 days, you get 5%. And if we didn't meet those deadlines, it actually came out of our budget instead. So people stayed on it. And I can see where these people would catch those type of situations. It also gives us another layer of making sure we're paying the right person because we're having somebody outside of the department looking at that. And then the department had signing off saying that that's the payment, that's the invoice, that's what I ordered. So I think there's a twofold something for the county actually by doing it this way. So that's why I'm in favor of this. Supervisor Kabarski. All right. Uh, first of all, how did we land on two versus one or none so that's part of it also does the pay grade come into this also i mean if, if we're creating a position then i guess we need to know what we're going to pay them too don't we mr chair yes it's um pay grade 13. it's um the last whereas i believe we have a couple of that in another department pay grade 13. Mr. Chair, and okay, go ahead. go ahead. I also want to touch on the other part of that question was why two? We're uh, so we've sat and we thought about this, and if we we have a lot of accounting experience, so we kind of know what the workload would be, but we're not rushing into anything yet. I mean, we're it's not like we're going to leave once this goes to the board. The next day, we're going to flip a switch on. We're still we still have to kind of lay things out because we have a lead fiscal specialist, and we need to know how much of the work is going to the lead fiscal specialist overall, then the rest will go to the, the clerks. But we know for sure, contracts, grants, and uh, asset acquisition disposition for sure. Vendor maintenance, that's another big one. Oh yeah, we have, so we have to do background checks on new vendors. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, we, there's a lot put on plates right now that I believe we can become more efficient and have stronger internal controls with all of this implementation, but it's gonna take time. We're not rushing into it. We gotta really think about what this means. Supervisor Paylor. Uh, is there people within the county that will be moving into these positions or are these going to be new hires? Mr. Chair? Yes. So the normal process going forward is that we always, we're gonna do an internal search unless we feel like the internal search pool is not gonna be big enough, we may just go ahead and open it up, but internal candidates are still invited to apply for these positions. But it is a lower grade position, so there may be others out there that wouldn't be interested because it would be a step down. Yes. And then the other part of that, basically the same question, I believe it was Rick asked before, that is there going to be savings within the county to, uh, to 
pay for these positions or are these going to be in addition to our exist existing budget? Mr. Chair? Yes. So right now there's a savings. I had touched on the HR director position that is vacant. And it's, you know, we're working on our payroll person getting reclassed into a higher um, grade as a HR manager. And so that will be that. So we still have the savings of the HR director not being there. Tabitha's position is one of the clerks. So it is a I, I believe it's a lower grade, right? So there's a savings in that one. It was a higher grade. It was pay Tabitha. Grade, it was pay grade 12, the HR coordinator. Okay. Um, and these are 13s? Yes. Okay. But overall, there was a savings. So we, we did put the numbers there. That we can't create something that's going to put more stress on our budget. That's for sure. We're trying to find savings all the time. We, and, you know, we had the register of deeds position. You know, there's an extra position there. But again, I can't uh, say that it's going to stay that way because I have a land and water issue to address. So I have some, I have to look into some things. Did you raise your piece? Kind of opposite Jerry's question. I probably already know this answer, but nobody's losing their jobs over creating these jobs. Mr. Chair? Yes. So it's always our, uh, interest in retaining employees. And the last thing you want to do is you want to put a fear factor out there that things are changing, you know, that they could potentially lose their positions. So I always, the note is if you're sitting in a seat, you're good. It's when the seat becomes vacant that we start to analyze. So I, I again, put the message out there that if you are a department and if you, ha if you have this vacancy and we're asking questions to not take offense by that, we're just doing our job to we're not questioning your authority or such, but we have to at least ask the questions and have um, good conversations with the department heads. But I do put a lot of weight on what the department heads say. In the end, they have more weight than, than maybe what we're recommending, but we'll just keep asking challenging questions and, hey, have you thought about this? But in the end, the department makes a decision. I think the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Maybe. right, right, because we have the HR position that's vacant and the land and water position that's vacant right now. So I don't think we're right. Nobody, no position is being eliminated. I just but, needed uh, that explanation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Sorry. Mr. Chair, okay. I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Supervisor Rick Pease. Second by Scott Pease. So any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. Okay. That was a nay. Yep. Okay. Noted. So, motion is approved and the resolution will be sent on county board. Uh, resolution to place the deputy medical examiner position on the county wage scale at pay grade 14. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Director. Right. So um, currently the way that the deputy medical examiners are compensated there. So they're, they take, you said 24 hour shifts um, and they're on call. They get an on call rate of um, 225 per hour for weekends, $1.75 per hour on weekdays. That's just them being on call, making themselves available to respond. Then they get a hundred dollars for a um, response call for death. Um, up, I'm gonna turn over to Marilyn to kind of elaborate because it's, it's okay. really goofy how their pay structure is and we're just trying to simplify the process and then compensate them um, for what they do on it and switching it over to an hourly basis, so. Back in 2013, when um, I became the medical examiner, I was told to just come up with what would be a feasible or fair amount for each call. Um, at that time, we were not part of the wage study. So we were not put on, on a, uh, even I was not on the wage study. So I came up with what I thought was a fair amount, figuring in all the paperwork and the call itself. But of course, every call is different. So it was just a general 
um, amount. And so, for example, a response call where we had to go out to a home um, was a, I put a hundred dollars on there. That is probably four hours at the home itself, and then another, you know, couple hours with uh, paperwork and doing your reports, doing the death certificate, doing the cremation permit. I came up with what I thought was fair for each type of call. So for a response call, that was the most time consuming. That's the one that was the most uh, hospice calls. Um, I came up with $50 for referrals from other hospitals. I came up with 35 doing a death notification for another county was 25. So I just came up with trying to figure out what was fair. And I, I still think it's fair overall, except that you just never know what you're going to get. I mean, I've, I've been on response calls that I've worked on for 18 hours. Um, so certainly a hundred dollars isn't. <laughs> right for that. But I always thought it evened out. Um, the problem now is those calls are getting more difficult. Uh, oftentimes, there's no next of kin. Um, there's no money. There's They're just be becoming more difficult. So this whole process was brought up with, I was trying to get an increase in the um, pay for a response call. But then it was brought up that um, probably the deputies are not in some cases, making minimum wage on some of those calls. So that's what brought us here. And my concern mostly was with the chief deputy. And there's I, there's something I don't understand because with the chief deputy, um, they are tasked with a lot more than the deputies. And it was all in this, um, the job description for the chief deputy, which I've had since I did it in 2013, but for some reason, it's not, Kyle, it's yep. not what? <laughs> Mr. Chair, so the, yes. um, the chief deputy job position, it's not on file with human resources. Um, so I'm not sure what exactly happened with that. Um, but as it stands, we have uh, three deputy medical examiners. Um, and she, Marilyn does have a chief deputy named. Um, I believe it, it's it, statutorily required. Yeah. Yeah. And at, at this point, it's, it's not the chief deputy position isn't going to be like at a higher pay grade than the other deputies. It's going to be on the same pay grade, but because the chief deputy has been in the position longer, they're going to receive more compensation on an hourly basis. But I think in the future, that needs to be reclassified. There's job description and it works out for now for this. Um, but if I were to leave and there's nobody that's been in it at a high, at a longer, um, you know, a, a more experience, that's going to get that higher pay grade. And the chief deputy definitely has a lot more on their plate than the deputies. Do. So I think once I leave, uh, that should be looked at as a reclassification for that position. But the resolution right now is just to put the deputies at a grade 14 on an hourly rate and then do it with the on-call. Yes. The call. Correct. Call per pay. See where he's got peace? Were other counties uh, looked into on this and see where they're at? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, we actually ran this by uh, McGrath the um, for the wage schedule and they came back with what the hourly rate uh, should be or where they should be placed at on our pay schedule. So they, when they do that, they also look at other counties to see how their deputies are compensated. Mr. Chair? Yes. Something I'll offer, try to keep it short, is that this addresses retention too because staff members that are filling these positions can can count on a certain wage where when it was on call, it was, um, this was a concern to the retention. Sylvia Kabarski. Just a, I guess, kind of a question regarding <clears throat> these, when someone goes out a, um, for a call, um, now, of course, instead of the $100, they'd be compensated per hour. But 
aren't the hours getting shall we say um, more than what they used to be simply because of uh, some of the circumstances involved that the sheriff's office is involved with and there's some less than legal stuff that goes on and somebody gets deceased I, I don't know how common that is so I guess if Marilyn could address that a little bit just kind of let me know what the you know what's average anymore that's a good question, but there, there's, I just can't ever talk about averages because every every call is different. And certainly if you have even even you talk about illegal things, but even like a car accident, um, those are very time consuming, uh, certainly more hours than a normal natural home death would be. Uh, suicides are, are more time consuming. So I, I can't give you an average. Uh, and that's the difficult part of this job is uh, I, when I came up with those numbers for the calls, I I took an average of what I thought was a, a fair rate for an average call. Uh, sometimes you work a lot more hours, but now and then you work less hours. So I just thought it was average. I don't know if that answers your question. I I, I just want to explain what average is. Average is the worst of the best and the best of the worst. <laughs> oh Bob. <laughs> How long? <laughs> Never mind. So very Rick Peace. Seeing I brought this up a couple of months ago in our committee. Um I think that this goes the correct step. However, I, I would love to see something come back even before Marilyn um would ever retire to fix the deputy pay so um when marilyn takes a vacation she actually is the, the deputy on call and um she's the, actually the the chief deputy while marilyn's gone and stuff um i know the chief deputy she she has is learning they're cross training her right now so i think that that should be looked at and actually put into effect before anybody would ever leave. That's just where I'm at with that. I, I think this is a step forward. I just don't know if we've, we've taken all the steps we need. Motion to approve by Supervisor Kabarski. Second by Supervisor Paler. So there's no further questions. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, signify by saying nay. Okay, motion is approved and that will be sent on to county board. Um, next, we got a resolution to authorize American Rescue Plan Act funds for expanding publicly accessible wireless, wireless internet service at uh, Pinewell and Castle Rock Parks. Mr. Chair. Yes, Supervisor Barsky. Just a question. Um, there is a tower on my farm, and if we're talking wireless, I guess my question would be, should I be involved with this, or should I recuse myself, or just abstain, or do you have any thoughts on that? You're not benefiting from that tower. Well, from that tower, he is, but but from this from resolution, this, yeah, from this resolution, you're not going to benefit from this. So, I don't see where you would have to recuse yourself. Okay. Yes, Supervisor Scott, please. Are the individual campers going to be charged a fee for the access to the internet, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, the campers when they when they get to the campground from my understanding they're able to connect to that wi-fi and then solaris would charge them so solaris would be the entity that's charging and receiving the revenues for it um, we figured this this alternative was the most beneficial for the county um, just putting those in and then solaris can handle collecting the revenue associated with it they charge probably like three four bucks for i know that's what like Chippewa campground charges up north. I got to pay like seven bucks for the week for the weekend, you know, when I'm up there. So to go on their Wi Fi. So, Supervisor Paler. The question I would have with the uh, 
with the cell phones we have today, and my wife and I travel a lot, and I very rarely ever sign on to the Wi-Fi in a hotel. Hmm. I just use, uh, even if I want to use uh, our laptop or something, I just use my phone as a hotspot. And usually I get better service that way than I do on Wi-Fi. So is this really necessary? Mr. Chair? Yes. There's no cell phone reception at these campgrounds, like, at all. Um, especially for Pete and Will. Um, like, you have, I don't they don't have very good wireless data at all. So this is gonna then allow them to connect to this offered network because they won't have the availability through their phone carrier. Okay, that answers your question. I mean, I, mean I, I know up at Chippewa Campground, I don't get a cell phone reception. So I mean, that's why I, pay for their internet because I can't go through my hotspot then so so yeah I mean my cell phone coverage isn't very good and I got a tower not even three miles away I don't know why I can't you know <laughs> not the right tower I guess so what's that no it's not Bob's tower I don't live that close to Bob <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what's the pleasure of the committee motion to approve by supervisor paler second by supervisor rick b so any further discussion saying not all in favor signify by saying aye Aye. Right. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Nay. Noted. John, I would like to be listed as abstaining. Okay. Yeah, then. So the motion approves and the resolution will move on the county board. Resolution to authorize. And there's a budget amendment thing there. On my printout here, see that? Okay, you don't have it on your schedule. So I got this big budget amendment thing right there. See that? Okay. <laughs> okay, next uh, is a resolution authorized using American Rescue Plan Act funds for town voting machines. Um. I think I should abstain from discussion and voting on this because I am one of the, I'm on the town board of one of the towns that will benefit by it. But I, we voted on other ones before and I know my towns received the voting machine, so. But are you on the town board? No, I'm not, but. I sit on the town board for okay. town of Springville and we have asked for one of these voting machines. Yeah, I, I had actually looked into this. You're not personally benefiting from this, so you you can stay on. Okay. It wouldn't be a conflict. Okay. But thanks for asking. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, why do we need more? Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, the municipalities requested if they could order more. And so... Since there is a cost in regards to having the voting machines through the municipalities, I requested it through ARPA. And um, you can see like how many voters they have, how many machines they have. And like for instance, Springville, they have voting four voting machines. And if they had a couple more, it would be helpful, especially when the voter turnout is so high now. And like the last election, we had um, three state and they were a lot of reading and the people sat there and read them. So it took longer to vote. And then we had a lot of write-ins. So we're learning as we go. And that's what helped us to realize that we might need a few more. 
Sure, very Scott Peace. Here's where I have problems with it. Leave it right there. Town of Springville, 837. Town of Quincy, 851. They have the same amount of voting machines, and Springville needs two more, and they got less voters. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, the town of Quincy, their town hall isn't big enough to handle any more voting machines, according to the clerk. I've never been out there for the voting, but um, your town hall is smaller. So she couldn't set them up. In okay, I voted out there. I've never been in there where I had to stand in line to vote. For Quincy, yeah, she didn't request any. Yes, Superintendent. Um, we did have some lines in Springville, nothing major um, with four machines. Uh, our clerk put down for two more. We actually, at the board level, only suggested one more. So there was a, a miscommunication. Okay. Uh, is there, John? Yes. Um, or Mr. Chair, I should say. So is there um, an expense after this is, after they acquire them? Could you go into that, Lyanna, on what kind of maintenance expenses and so forth are required? That's exactly what it is, a maintenance expense. I don't know what the maintenance expense would be yet because we will be going into the first year of maintenance right now. And then they also have to um, purchase batteries. Super Scott Peace. So does the county incur that or the township? The municipalities. That's why we requested that we would purchase these for them because the towns also have a cost. So there's no additional cost to us in purchasing the machines? Just the purchase price. Okay. Did you want to amend the... Uh number for Springville and take it down to five, one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, even if we vote on it and it's two, I mean, you can always change it to one if you go back to the town board and, you know, maybe you didn't get the right number. Maybe it was, you know, so. Mr. Chair. Yes, Supervisor Kowarski. I would move that we approve this and send it on to the county board. Okay. Okay, Supervisor Rick Peace with a second. So motion's on the floor. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay. Okay, motion is approved and that will, resolution will move on the county board. Next meeting date. I don't have it here though. I should have brought my other computer. You can name it. Next meeting date is tomorrow. Next meeting date. Well, we got it. Well, that's not, we're just in association with that one. Um, We're gonna to have to talk at the county board meeting about moving the county board, at least that's, I will not be here on June 20th, but somebody else wasn't gonna be here neither, right? I think the clerk, clerk was gonna be off on June 20th too, so. So, so we'd wanna move that, but uh, the week of the 5th, the 9th, June 9th, but if we're going to move the county board meeting up to the 13th, or or back to the 27th would work for me too, for the county board meeting. It's better to go back than forward. The 9th, 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 June 9th. That's what it normally is. <laughs> Can't be the week before that. I won't be here. So, okay. So June 9th. 
Seeing nothing else. Uh, yes. Okay. The dates. Yeah. Okay. What does the 27th look like for county board for us? The 9th and the 27th? Okay. Okay. We'll make sure you let us know too when, when the, the clerk calls it, say no. So say, you know, so. Okay. Just say no. <laughs> yeah, just say no. Okay. 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 I'll declare the meeting adjourned then. Thank you. We do have things to sign too. <laughs>